right good afternoon or good day to you wherever you are so today i will be making a new video and we are going to start in earnest the discussions on each of the topics in the syllabus so today we are going to look at the first very first topic in the biology syllabus but before we do that i want to quickly show you how questions are distributed in the jam exam so that that would help you to understand what area you should concentrate more on and then where to focus your energy everything is important but then sometimes you need to be strategic in how you prepare for the exam so this screen will show you the way questions are distributed so what you have here are the sections in the syllabus variety of organisms so what you should expect here will be between seven to nine questions why section two or section b form and function you should expect about 20 questions from there section c ecology you should expect between nine to 11 questions why section section d you have heredity and variation just about five questions and section e you have evolution and that's also about five questions that brings the total number of questions to 50. then if you look at the percentage distribution for these different sections you would agree that questions from questions on form and function makes up 40 percent of the total questions you should expect in the exam and that is followed by ecology and um, followed by heredity and variation and the remaining um, section would share the the other percentages that's evolution and um, evolution and heredity sorry heredity and evolution will share five percent sorry for um variety of organism takes 18 percent all right, so now let's go back to today's work. So based on the book, Explicit Biology, I will go through the very first chapter of the book with you. And this first chapter is living organism. So in this chapter, you are expected to understand the characteristics of living organisms, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, cell structure and functional functions of cell components and finally levels of organization so what you see here this chapter quickly explains the characteristics of organisms and i'm sure by now everybody knows what the common characteristics of organisms are and that is summarized in this memory teeth marriage movement assimilation of food respiration reproduction irritability or sensitivity adaptation growth excretion all right so also the syllabus expects you to understand the role of viruses and the strategic position they play in in life so they actually are strategic between living and non-living organisms and then you should also understand how to differentiate between the lowest form of life bacteria and uh, viruses and that you'll find here then we proceed to cell and um, the classification. So you we have eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell. You should be able to distinguish between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. You should know the common characteristics between the two. And then you should be able to, to label, draw and label a representative prokaryotic cell. And also you should be able to draw and label a representative eukaryotic cell. Now, a representative eukaryotic cell could be plant cell or animal cell. And then we should also, we can then proceed to cell components and their function. So you should understand the functions of the various components of the cell from the nucleus to the nuclear envelope, the rough endoplasmic reticulum to smooth endoplasmic reticulum 
What's the function of the Golgi apparatus? The mitochondria, the lysosome, ribosome, microtubules. And um, this, of course, the cell membrane. Also, the function of chloroplast and cell wall. They are very important. And then we proceed to the levels of organization. So organization of life is in levels and um, we be that begins from, begins with cell to the level of tissue, to the level of organ and to the level of system to form the, the whole organism. So you should be able to give examples of organi an organism at the level of cell and examples of cells in in plants and animals and also you should be able to give examples of tissue and organism at that level a typical example is the hydra at the level of tissue a typical example of organism at the level of cell is the amoeba then organ you should be able to describe that and also give example and give an example of organism that is at that level okay and finally system you should be able to give a description and also the various examples all right so then we move on to questions because i i will continue to emphasize that all these informations they are found in your test books. So they are not something we should spend so much time dwelling on. But what is key in preparing for this exam is to be able to solve as many questions on this topic as you can find. And that has to be done very quickly also. So I will take some, I'll look at some questions here. Number one, we have divided the questions into the various um, subtopics on this chapter. So we have questions on characteristics of organisms. And the very first question here says, all living organisms would either photosynthesize, move, respire, feed, or transpire. What do you think here? So the very first question, only plants will photosynthesize. In the real sense of it, only animals will move. Of course, you can give cases of uh, taxism and where organisms with chloroplast being able to move because they have locomotive structures. But this is not a general, this is not general with um, all living organisms. So the, the key word here is all living organisms. All right. And then if you look at the word feed, feed is, yeah, it, it could be synonymous with nutrition, but then this, in this case, this will be unique to animals. Then transp transpiration is a plant phenomenon. So here, respire, respiration is common to all organisms because this is the only way to liberate energy that will be used by cells. So the correct answer here would be respire. So. Um, the whole idea is to be able to logically arrive at the right answer. So you should be able to do what, what I call elimination. You should eliminate the wrong answer. You should be able to, there are some answers, I mean, some options that readily pops up to you as wrong. You will know them and then you eliminate and arrive at the right answer. So further, I'll take one more question. Um, this other interesting question. Um, I'll look at this question. The membrane surrounding the vacuole in a plant cell is called what? Plasma lemma, tonoplast, nuclear membrane, endoplasmic reticulum. Now, if you look at the diagram of the cell if you go if you go back up a little you would you can eliminate and see that the right answer to this question is the tonoplast so on that note 
I would admonish you to consider more questions. And also, please, I want you to um, leave a comment for me. What you think is the best way to deliver this lecture, considering the time. I just realized today that the exam is in a few months, and also I have a very hectic schedule, and then I'm trying to see how I can move with speed. I might not have time to go through the entire syllabus with you. So what I'm thinking, maybe you give me some suggestions on how to give this lecture to be timely, particularly for this year's jam. Should we consider taking 50 questions, then that would probably help us to touch on the entire part, aspect of the syllabus or we just continue to move in beats but because I promise not to exceed 10 minutes on every video that I'm doing. So on that note, I would wait to read your comments and then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and have a good one. Bye.